about that when you arrived in the area and um, what you've actually been doing since you arrived in the county? Okay. Uh, so, Louis, I arrived uh, in Leicestershire on the 23rd of December, just before Christmas. So we've uh, enjoyed our first Christmas amidst the many boxes. So we moved from Kent. Uh, we moved to uh, uh, a village called Rothley, which is south of Loughborough. And uh, since then, we have been exploring the place, you know, with our children. We have four children. We've been uh, enjoying the Bradgate Park, discovering uh, uh, walks in the local area, discovering our libraries and uh, settling into schools. And I've just started my new job last weekend. All right. So you've been settling into the area. Did you go to the Curve? Is that one of the first things that you did? When you got one of the first things we did, Louise, was to go to the Curve. And we thoroughly enjoyed the story of the lion, witch, and the wardrobe, which was visiting us here. And we had a great time as a family uh, uh, watching a familiar story we've uh, read to our children, a story that was read to us. And of course, it's a story with deep meaning. Uh, we loved um, watching that, and we loved the Curve. What do you think to the area? Is it a bit different? So you, you were in Kent first and now you've moved. You've moved around quite a bit. Could you tell us a bit about your background and how you've moved around the country? And sure. I've, um, I, I've lived half my life in India and half my life in England. Uh, and I arrived as a 21-year-old to do a gap year. And uh, uh, my plan was to be here for 11 months. And uh, 21 years on, I'm still here on a gap year. No, it's not a gap year anymore, is it? It's uh, um, I'm married to Katie. We have uh, four children. Uh, but my heritage is uh, west coast of India, the state of Kerala, uh, which is where I'm from. And so uh, Leicestershire is home now. But in this country, we moved up and down. So I went to university here. Uh, I, I worked in Surrey. I worked in the northwest of England in the Lake District. And until recently, I was in uh, Gillingham in Kent. And um, can you tell us a bit about the moment that you decided you wanted to dedicate your life to the faith? Sure. I grew up in, uh, in, in a church in India. So um, many people here actually don't know. Christianity arrived in India a very, very long time ago. So my family are, are part of the Orthodox Church in India. And so I grew up in a church context. But when I was 15 years old, I decided, ah, how would I want to spend the rest of my life? So uh, there's an element of actually then I deciding to take my faith seriously. And uh, since then, I've pursued that as, you know, God's call upon my life. Right. Was there a specific moment or was it just something that evolved gradually? Both hand. Uh, on the 24th of October, somebody kind of explained to me uh, the, the, the reality of the good news of Jesus. So I kind of embraced that. Uh, but the reality is also, over a period of time, that kind of got honed. It's with people, friendships, people who like mentors who've come alongside me and uh, saying things like, hey, listen, you've got uh, a gift here that you may want to use uh, in terms of um, the life of the church. So that's how I ended up working for the church, but it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a long journey in that sense, long in the sense that it goes back centuries because Christianity has been the part of the world uh, for many, many centuries. And is it right that your mum worked in a leprosy hospital? I mean, did that have an impact on deciding to, to, do, to follow this path? Yeah, my mother worked as a nurse in Bangalore Leprosy Hospital. It was a government hospital, and the reality is not many nurses would want to go and work in a leprosy hospital. So my mother did uh, go, and uh, uh, she felt called to work in a leprosy hospital. So I spent my formative early years in a leprosy hospital, and it did have a great impact on me. The thing is, leprosy is a dreadful, dreadful condition, and whereby uh, uh, what it taught me is the need to attend to pain wherever it might be. And so I see pain in contemporary world in so many ways, in contemporary culture in so many ways. So my heart is drawn to wherever pain might be in the, at least in the last, in the conversations in our cultures. I'm drawn to pain, and that's because I grew up in a leprosy hospital where my mother was a nurse. And you say that um, people have said to you before that you have a gift. What, what is that gift? Is that what you were mentioning, that you can heal pain and that kind of thing? I'm a curious person. 
I'm always interested in people and especially people from different backgrounds, different nationalities, different uh, uh, ways of life and different uh, journeys. So I'm drawn to people, so I'm curious about people. Uh, and one of the great privileges of being a priest and now a bishop is the privilege of working with people across the board. So that's, I think, a gift as well, but also uh, the gift of being able to communicate the uh, person of God and the idea of God and making that relevant to people of all ages is perhaps the gift that people might think I've got, uh, but you'll have to find out in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, probably seeing me in the few, few months and years to come. So you're gifted in communicating because you've mentioned that you're passionate about communicating with a wide range of people and diversity. Is that what you're passionate about and do you think that's what makes you a great you know, bishop? I'm passionate about it. So I've just come from a place called St. Mark's in Gillingham, which is one of the most diverse communities. Um, St. Mark's uh, and the parish is set in, the, uh, in one of the Medway towns. You see lots and lots of needs lots of poverty uh, and in that context it also has a huge diversity in terms of people from around the world uh, who come and live in that part of the world. Uh, one of the great gifts that I've had there is of actually having to communicate the person of God to a wide range of people and of course sharing hospitality, sharing tables with people from around the world. It's one of the great privileges and so as the bishop I get to do that as well, uh, being both host and a guest uh, in people's homes. So uh, uh, Romeo is apparently going to take me out for a, for a curry before long so I should look forward to uh, practicing hospitality there as well. Very good. And do you think because you're quite a, um, a vibrant character, do you think that will attract more people to the faith and um, make you more approachable to, to younger people. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard uh, recently, mainly because uh, Joe said to me that I'm the youngest uh, bishop in the Church of England. And so there is an element of actually uh, my heart to connect with all people. And that includes people of all ages. And as I was walking into your studio today, I, I met somebody who actually uh, I kind of was kind of uh, fascinated by their own story. And it just kind of unearthed a desire in me to connect with with the arts, uh, with the uh, with the color, with the uh, uh, culture as a whole. And so those are some of the things that kind of are deeply <laughs> inbred in me. And so it might be it might be a way of actually drawing people to explore faith uh, in in their own kind of way, uh, in a way that actually is a, is a blessing to everybody. Yeah. Have people actually mentioned that you're quite a bit different to the usual bishops that, that um, have come before you? Yeah, people have mentioned you are a bit different. Uh, I'm not sure what they mean by that. Um, I, 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 I think, I think yes. I suppose uh, we are all different in in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but in the Church of England, I suppose we have a conversation around what it means for us to be a church that truly reflects the a nation that we find ourselves in. And so, therefore, perhaps my difference is a gift to the church as well as to our communities. Yeah. And um, what other passions do you have then on your downtime? I'm so glad you asked me this question. I love cricket. I love watching it. I love playing it. I go to Lords every given opportunity I can. And uh, also, I'm hoping to go uh, to the local cricket, county cricket as well here. So I'm hoping to play a little bit uh, for perhaps one of the local village teams maybe. And did you know the Diocese of Leicester has a cricket team? So part of my job description has to be playing cricket for the diocese as well. Well, as a way of saying, cricket is what I love and I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. What about things like music and the arts? You mentioned those earlier. Yeah, I love photography. I discovered photography when we lived in the Lake District. And so uh, I, I really enjoy photography. Uh, I play the guitar and uh, in my downtime, I play the guitar. I enjoy music. I love cooking. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, there are a whole lot of bunch of things. But um uh, as you can clearly see, Louise, my heart is cricket. And so it's, the thing is, cricket is not just cricket. It's about relationships. It's about people. It's the time with pe you get to be with people. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and cricket is so more than just a sport. Uh, it, is, it, is about, it is about people and culture and connections. Uh, that's why I'm drawn to the game. And could you tell us a bit about the honour of being the youngest bishop in the Church of England? I mean, that's 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what to make of that, really. I think, uh, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not, uh, but th the reality is I am, uh, and I suppose uh, it, the Indian press, they've got this. In fact, Joe found about 40 different pieces of... Um, uh, uh, Lots more now. In the southwest coast of India, the fact that actually I come from that part of the world and I'm the youngest bishop in the Church of England is quite important. And for me, I, I'm just who I am and uh, I'm just getting on with life and and, uh, I've, and and being faithful to the call of being a bishop. I just happen to be 42 years old. Right. And were you actually like chosen then? How did it come about that you... Why do you think you were chosen? Yeah, you see, a bishop's job is not something that you kind of go apply for, as it were. So it has to be a job that actually others come alongside you. So uh, there is a process that uh, I went through uh, effectively. Uh, it is a discernment process, which means to uh, really kind of work out uh, with other people, with the church, with effectively personally with God as well, to see if this is the kind of... Uh, role I want to be inhabiting in the next few years, and so yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's not just me applying for it as it were. It is my willingness to say yes to it, but it also has other people involved, um, including Her Majesty the Queen, who of course um, uh, approves the nomination of bishops in the Church of England. So have you had the chance to meet her, or will you get the chance to meet her? Not yet, but I long for a day when I can meet her. I I do pray for her regularly, and I'd love to meet her one day. Anybody uh, notable or she's been involved with local community groups? Do you know, I've been just meeting whoever come my way, uh, but I've been quite strategic in terms of going around meeting people, actually. So one of the pieces of work that I'm going to do as a bishop here is to uh, do some work around intercultural worshipping communities. One of the great gifts of our community is its diversity. People from around the world, people who ha call their home from around the world, are in one place. And therefore, we are asking the question, what does it mean for communities, for cultures to come together and for us to be sharing life, sharing learning, sharing heritage together? Those are all extraordinary gifts that wherever we come from, we bring to the table. And therefore, diverse communities like ours have the opportunity to cherish and celebrate that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to being part of that. I haven't met anybody, well, I've met lots of famous people, but, uh, uh, I think uh, I've got to be quite uh, um, strategic about going about meeting people. So yeah, introduce me to um, I'm, I've met uh, uh, Romeo. Is that fa is he famous? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And what does the role involve, and what do you enjoy most about it? Mm. The role fundamentally is uh, uh, with Bishop Martin Snow. It's to oversee the uh, churches in Leicestershire. So it's effectively to uh, provide leadership. So it's a leadership role uh, in, the, in, in this part of the world, in the Church of England. Uh, very specifically, there are two or three areas I'm passionate about, which is kind of part of the role. Uh, one is, as I mentioned to you, about intercultural work within, within the diocese. Uh, the second is in the area of vocation. What that means is uh, vocation is the call of God on our lives. And therefore, I'll be involved in choosing leaders who will end up uh, leading churches into the future. So there is a process that they go through. Uh, so I've got a big part in, 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 in choosing leaders of the future, of the, of the church in this part of the world. Uh, the third is resources in terms of how churches can be places where uh, our gifts can be used as a resource to be a blessing to be uh, to the locality of the 327 churches uh, that are in, in Leicestershire. So uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a role of overseeing and leadership. You're just getting started, but what are you looking forward to um, most and what do you hope to achieve in your role? It is not possible, Louise, to actually love a place before knowing it. So I think my priority in the next year or so is just to go and sit in coffee shops, in restaurants, in people's studies, in people's homes, and for them to come and walk with me uh, in parks and streets and uh, Bradgate Park, perhaps. Uh, I want to just get to know the place uh, as a way of actually really seeing what is Leicestershire really like. I'm a stranger to Leicestershire, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know the area. Uh, that's my first priority. And therefore, actually, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting people. I'm an, I'm an extrovert. I just love being with people. Uh, and so I just am looking forward to uh, enjoying people's 
company in the first first year uh, before working out how might I specifically um, care and love and engage and connect with this place. So you're just finding your feet at the moment? Yeah. Finding my feet, that's the right expression, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, and what about the congregation numbers? Are they, would you say they're going up and down and have they been affected by COVID, would you say? Yeah, what I do know is actually, you know, COVID has affected all communities in so many ways. Uh, I picked up some uh, um, uh, uh, research recently, which actually uh, effectively says um, two thirds of the people uh, in, I suspect, most faith communities are coming back to physical space. Uh, and therefore, that might be for all kinds of, of, of good reasons as well. And that means uh, our numbers are going to look different. But that is indicative of the change. The world that we are going to inhabit is going to be a very different place. It is a very bewildering place. But there are continuities. The message of the good news of who Jesus is, about what God has to offer, that has not changed. Perhaps human beings and the way we engage with faith has changed as well. But I also am finding so many people have a longing. Uh, even as we're walking in, I'm meeting somebody, that sense of actually desire to actually make sense of life and meaning and what happens after death, for instance, is a question. Um, I think faith communities, and from my point of view, Christianity has something to offer all people uh, in terms of faith, hope, and love. Mm. So the church still has a important place in society then you'd say perhaps more than ever really with the way things are in the world in some ways uh, more uh, important than ever you know one of the things we're discovering actually is the impact of covid is the loneliness in our communities you know especially um, uh, perhaps the elderly who are actually asking you know in this bewildering world who actually cares for us and therefore communities have a very important role to play churches have a very important role to play of connecting people giving people a sense of belonging and along the way giving people a sense of meaning as well thank you very much